Hello ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen back here on General Adult Teens and Early Like, welcome back to Review Illusion. And today, well, we got something special planned, or at least I got something special planned for you all. I decided to change the formula a bit and review something a little bit more different. Because, well, a lot of review shows can be different, changed, and always have a different idea in mind. So I decided, why not review something a little bit more unique? And that's exactly what we're doing. Hi. Uh, Bob, what exactly are you doing here? Well, since you made me go through that torturous experience of playing Ballistics NG, I decided to return the favor by crashing your review show. You know, the one you've been putting off until right now or so? You know, the one you've been basically lying about? Okay, Bob, you don't have to be so hurtful. But how about this? Could you not do that? Because I really want to get this out. But how about this? How about this? If you help me review this, what I'm reviewing today, I'll give you some. I will. I will give you some more Temi flakes if you help me through it. Does that sound all right? Do we have a deal? Mm, all right. Okay. Go get your chair and sit on it so we can begin. Hello, my beautiful bots, and this is the second episode of Review Illusion. Sorry it took so long, but you know what? To make it up for you, I decided to bring a special guest. Hi, everyone. My name's Bob, and today we're reviewing something a little bit different. Today we're reviewing the book Killer Instinct by Joseph Finder. Wait, wait. What? I, wait. I thought you said we were reviewing Killer Instinct. Well, we are. I thought Killer Instinct was that video game series. Well, it is, but what we're reviewing is not the game of Killer Instinct, but a book instead by the same name. Although it came out later, so I don't know how exactly that works, but we're reviewing the book. And it's by an author that I actually quite enjoy. His name is Joseph Finder. And so we'll be reviewing that today. But why exactly? Look, I've been underground for a couple of years, but even I know that you reviewing a book is kind of dumb. But despite my years underground, I could tell that your race has lived in a very large technological future. I mean, it's kind of impossible to not notice, especially with all the advancements in technology. You've got your smartphones, you've got your tablets, you've got those computers. So my main question is, why would anyone read a book exactly? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Print isn't really dead, and it's quite honestly enjoyable to read something and let your imagination run wild. So, you know, some of my fans might actually be readers, so, you know, there's a chance that they could actually read this. But also, one of my fans actually is writing a book, or something to that extent, so I suggest you be nice to them. And besides, if I lose any subscribers, I can't pay you and Temi Flakes. What do you think of that? Let me ask that question again. Who would read a book? I would, of course, because I'm a very cultured individual who is very much of the top class of his own kind, you know? So I enjoy reading the books of J.K. Rowling and some other people just alongside Napstabook. I mean, he and I are quite dapper fellows while we eat crumpets and tea. I mean, we are one of the most refined of monsters, and trust me, you can trust me on that very much so. Yes, you can. Yes, sir. -y. Yes. Mm, yes. Mm. Okay, before we continue, I do want to say, Bob, that's not a crumpet, that's a cookie, okay? Make sure to get that correct, otherwise you might make some people upset. Who is going to be upset over a cookie being called a crumpet? I mean, no one's going to be that butthurt about it, right? Right? Well, likely one of my subscribers might be from the Great Britain or something, because a lot of them are from across the world, so I really don't want to get any of them angry at me for no reason. So can we just start this review, Bob, right now? Okay, okay. Go ahead and do whatever. Now, since this is a book and not a cartoon or a movie, it's a little bit difficult to review. If only just to uh, try to review it myself. I do recommend reading it beforehand because, well, I really enjoyed it and really think you will too. But for now, I'm going to discuss exactly how I'm going to be re reviewing this. I'm going to be doing a full s a sort of summary of what exactly the book's about. And the first part, the middle part's going to be heavily spoiler alert, so I'm going to have to ask you to skip at a certain point. Bob will tell you, trust me, he will. And then finally, I'll give my final thoughts, which will be spoiler free, and tell you exactly what I think of the book overall, and whether or not you should read it. 
Killer Instinct revolves around the life of Jason Stebman, a somewhat burned out electronic salesman in sales who, through the persuasion of his wife, decides to pursue a promotion in his company, but faces an uphill battle against others for the position in his company, Electronics, somewhere in uh, Massachusetts. Well, during a minor car accident, Jason befriends an ex Special Forces turned tow truck driver named Kurt Smekov. Both, both of them become great friends after a few conversations, and soon after, Jason's life takes a turn, a turn for the better. As things go his way, he soon realizes that the events are just not coincidental, and that, well, not only is uh, office a battlefield, but sometimes your greatest friend can become your worst enemy. And that's pretty much it without too much spoiling the rest of the story, but I'll get to that in a second. So basically, that's the whole premise of the story. It's a basically behind the scenes corporations thing. And it goes into deeper detail, especially with more corporations and fluctuation and problems that arise. It's basically the same premise of a corporate business being corrupted from the inside. One plot may seem simple, it's actually quite enjoyable at least, but... HOLD IT! Skip to this time and the top of this character. Because I really don't want to spoil anything because I think the book would do way better at doing just that. I'll go over some aspects that I found interesting and some gripes I have, but at the end of it all I'll give my final opinion on it so you won't miss much. Okay, are you sitting down? Good. You see, most of the coincidences that were happening were not just because of Jason having good luck, such as some of his rivals having difficulty selling stuff or both of them having to explain why they were at country clubs. No, there's a big secret about it. Guess who it is? You guessed it, it was Kirk. <gasps> Were you surprised? I bet you weren't. No, seriously, that is not really too surprising in all honesty. Definitely not a big surprise, but it's certainly an interesting point to see Kurt, a uh, former ex-military marine, up against someone who's just a normal, everyday Joe, which is Jake. The book may not have a big twist, but it definitely has a good enough twist at the very end to make you actually quite suspenseful. A real interesting factor that really kept me interested in Killer Instinct was its characters. Now, the main character, Jason, is actually quite likable as a person. He's a nice guy who really has no problems. Kurt is such a badass despite being, you know, bad in his own extent. His And there's other side characters that were both memorable and quite enjoyable to watch. I really can't say that I didn't hate any characters because they were all quite enjoyable. Even, the, even some of the bad guys were entertaining to watch and I loved to hate them. Though you could pretty much say that there is a bit of a difference, and there is some cliched moments here and there about the book, including its story of, of how friends turn against each other, or how a friend immediately takes things too far, and immediately does something against each other. It's kind of similar to that of Bridesmaids, where the friends immediately become enemies and try to sabotage each other, or you could say it's kind of like uh, the 2004 version of The Phantom of the Opera. What? It's a movie based on the Phantom of the Opera. I have no idea what you're saying. Well, anyway, other than that, there's some other ones that you could actually take part of, such as even the Spider-Man movie where uh, Peter uh, fight fought Harry, his best friend. Now, despite this, the story is actually pretty well paced. It's so cinematic and has its own little cliches that actually feel quite different in this department. It's action and very much like a greatly set. It has great atmosphere and great tension between different characters. In fact, it made me want to read it over and over again because of both its characters and because of the way it presented itself. Bob, would you stop that? Sorry, I'm just bored. Bored of what? The fact that you made me read this book, I mean, it's nothing really special all that much. What the heck are you talking about? It's very good. Eh, I've seen better. Trust me, you just think it's okay because you haven't seen all that many cliches about different stuff and haven't gotten tired of them. How would you know anything about cliché? I've watched anime. Trust me, I've watched it. Wait, I thought, wait, how could you watch anime? Exactly. Alphys. Wait, she invited you to ever watch an anime with her? Well, only if it, no one else ever wanted to with her. 
Oh. Wait, what do you mean no one else? If Undyne, Metaton, and nobody else wanted to watch anime with her, I was the last person she'd pick. And in all honesty, I've seen a lot of cliches, and this book does have its issues. For example, some of the twists don't really feel genuine, at least until the very end of the book. Most of the perspective is only in Jason's, which doesn't build too much tension, as it could have done better if we would have gone through Kurt's perspective. Okay, now you're doing it. Now, is it perfect? No. There are certain issues I had with the book, but I certainly had more fun reading it than anything else. It really kicked my uh, creati creativity into overdrive because I really imagined myself in that situation or just imagined myself watching it. Heck, the picture you're seeing right now is actually a photo I made up myself. It's just like a uh, picture like project thing I made. It's a fake poster, so don't take it for serious. But anyway, yeah, but yeah, does it have issues? I'm mad enough to say yeah, it does have issues. Some of its pacing is a bit odd here and there. Some of its um, storytelling is a bit weird here and there. Uh, for example, I really wish it could have followed Kurt's perspective in some departments to where uh, Kurt uses some of his special forces training to either kill people or do stuff because you would see of how crazy he really is. Plus, we also are never told why Kurt is like this. Why is he like this? Well, you just have to assume he is. Now I'll be talking about the book's ending real quick. Jason immediately tries to get some blackmail information to try and get Kurt arrested or taken away. But unfortunately, Kurt has actually done something that's rather smart. He's actually gotten one of his old buddies to immediately be on the police force, which immediately has Jason cornered. It seems bleak, but then Kurt immediately shoots his friend and immediately betrays him because, well, he doesn't want to have any witnesses. Great friend, huh? But thankfully for our hero, Jason actually comes up with a bit of a good trick that causes uh, Kurt to immediately grab a uh, briefcase that's been wired to some C4s. After tricking Kurt to opening it, well, Jason somehow miraculously survives the close explosive proximity of the C4. I don't know, maybe it's just logic? Anyway, after that little incident, Jason immediately uh, goes out of his way to go back to his company. He immediately thanks to Kurt's um, meddling beforehand and some of his own little brilliance, he was able to climb the corporate ladder and is close to being CEO. But thanks to a little bit of help from a rather some Japanese ties, and no, not this type of ties, but some help, he was able to lock a very large position in the company. I think it's CEO. I, it's been a while since I read the book. So now Jason is a CEO and is very much powerful and rich. But not only that, but his wife is safe and their newborn baby is delivered without so much as a problem. And so far it seems like as if he's going to have a great life ahead of him. And that was Killer Instinct by Joseph Finder. And well, how do I feel? Well, I still love the book, honestly. I actually quite enjoyed it when I first read it. You know, to be fair, maybe I didn't give this book too much of a shot. And now that I've read it a bit, it's still interesting to read in my own time. Yeah, exactly, Bob. It's interesting to read. Even if it is a little cliched here and there, it still has great characters, great setting and tension that make it so enjoyable to read. It's a very good thriller book that really does make you feel a little bit different. Even if it is something that's, what do you call it, a little bit predictable, it still has some good twists and turns here and there that really will keep you on your edge. One thing I really, really enjoyed with this book is its positive ending at the very end. It's rare that we ever see in some of these types of books, or any types of media nowadays, that we see a very genuine happy ending little bit open and shut, but it's basically the book's closed. As soon as you close it, you know exactly that the characters are fine. You know that the character is basically alright. But I really won't say anything other than the ending of the book is definitely worth reading. It's very nice and very heartwarming, and I very much enjoyed it. Maybe that's why the book got me. Maybe it's because I really enjoyed its message of very much a happy ending that can actually happen. Other than that, Jace other than that, Killer Instinct is definitely worth a read, if you could ever get it. I don't know where you could possibly get it, either at bookstores or possibly at, you know, uh, audible.com. Please sponsor me. Man, you are really, really desperate, aren't you?
What? It's, it, 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 come. Don't, don't bother. You're more shameless than Metaton and his product placements. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more. I am hoping to do more review evolution in the future. And next week, I'll actually be reviewing a game that's sort of more relevant to what I'm doing now. But anyway, guys, that's it for now. I'm Ultrabot Ultimate. I'm Bob the Timmy. Saying, see you next time for the next video. Sayonara. Sayonara.